This video is sponsored by DistroKid. I'm gonna show you five soft clipping techniques that I often use to achieve louder, fuller mixes. If you're not familiar, a clipper is a type of dynamic range processor that can be used to control the peaks in an audio signal by cutting or clipping a waveform when it exceeds a set level. This is different from when we talk about clipping or overloading a mixer channel, for example, which produces artifacts and a distortion that sounds like a harsh, buzzy sound. Clipper plugins are designed to handle clipping in a way that minimizes those unwanted artifacts. They often use algorithms algorithms and processes to shape the distortion in a musically pleasing way, avoiding that harshness that might occur from unintentional clipping. I prefer to use soft clipping as it tends to produce a smoother, more musical distortion compared to hard clipping which abruptly cuts off the waveform and leads to a more extreme effect. Now there's a few reasons why engineers and producers use soft clipping in a mix. The main ones being to control the level of a signal which can include using a clipper to create headroom, two, to reduce the dynamic range by lowering the loudest peaks, therefore bringing them closer in volume to the quieter parts of a signal. Three, to increase the perceived loudness of a signal by allowing you to push the overall level closer to the maximum without creating harsh distortion. And four, to enhance the sound by using the natural distortion that is generated as a result of clipping, which leads to a desirable sound to some. We're going to explore this across a variety of scenarios ranging from individual tracks, groups, and masters. So by the end of this video, you have a few strategies on how to implement this into your own sessions to achieve louder, fuller mixes. But before we do that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, DistroKid. If you're an artist that puts out multiple music releases per year, you could save a lot of money and simplify your life by using DistroKid. Millions of artists, myself included, rely on DistroKid to get their music onto popular streaming platforms including Spotify, Apple Music, and more. They make getting your music onto stores a breeze with their simple interface, and they pass on 100% of the earnings generated from your music directly to you. They even make splitting a song's earnings super easy with their splits feature, great for sharing a song's revenue with featured artists, producers, and other collaborators. Other distributors make you pay every time you upload something, or they keep a percentage of your earnings, which ultimately ends up costing you more. With DistroKid, you pay a low annual subscription fee that lets you distribute unlimited music for the year, making it much more convenient and less expensive than the other guys. DistroKid also gives you access to helpful tools for content creation and marketing your release, including hyperfollow landing pages, the busy video generator, and much more. A lot of artists I work with love using DistroKid, and I'm sure you will too. You can sign up today using my link down below to save 7% off your first year. Thank you, DistroKid, for sponsoring this video and now back to the content. Now before I show you the first soft clipping technique, you might be wondering what sound should I be applying clipping to? Clipping tends to work best on highly dynamic transient dense sounds. So stuff like drums and percussive elements like plucks, pianos, guitars, and even vocals. Sustained material like strings, pads, and long held vocal notes may not benefit as much from clipping as their transient dense counterparts. And this is because they tend to have fewer sharp peaks, which means clipping will have less of an impact on the overall sound. Sound. Sure, you could use it to warm things up and add some saturation. And of course, if there are occasional peaks, you could probably use a clipper on them in this scenario. But for most of the time, you're going to find yourself using this on stuff like kicks, snares, 808s, plucks, and again, more percussive styles of vocals. And this, of course, translates to groups and masters as well. When sounds combine, they are much more likely to clip. So a clipper can be useful in these scenarios to mitigate that. We'll talk more about this later on in the video as we approach groups and masters as a whole. But for now, let's explore the first technique here which is soft clipping individual sounds to create more headroom while preserving its perceived loudness. This is great for individual drum sounds in particular, like the snare, which can be very dominant and dynamic in genres like hip hop, but it can also easily overload a mixer channel as a result. We can ultimately use the clipper almost like we would use a limiter to prevent the sound from exceeding a set level, therefore creating headroom and preventing them from overloading the channel, but still while maintaining its perceived loudness. For this example, let's focus on the snare in this track. I'm gonna play it and let's actually pay attention to the peak level and see see exactly how much headroom, if any, we have. So you can see here, we actually have no headroom at all. This thing is peaking at exactly zero dB. Now, of course, we could gain stage this by simply using the volume fader or even putting in a gain plugin on the inserts. But for the sake of this example, let's focus on using a clipper to create headroom instead. I've got standard clip open here, and we're essentially gonna set the clip setting to minus one dB, which means anything that tries to exceed minus one dB peak level will get clipped and brought down. And therefore we're gonna create one dB of headroom in the process of doing this. So it's no longer gonna hit zero, it's now going to hit minus one dB. 
I'm also not using any of the gain functions on the input or the output here. And you're gonna see consistently throughout the rest of this video that I am using the soft clip pro feature here for standard clip. I'm not gonna be using the saturation at all. And I am gonna be just simply focusing on one X oversampling. So no oversampling basically, even though I could go up, the problem is once you start adding more oversampling, while it can be better in terms of how it translates, the clipping itself is not as accurate. It starts to actually not necessarily bring it down by minus one DB. It might bring it down by 0.8 or something like that. And then you need to make up for it with gain. So simply for the sake of this lesson, I'm only going to use one X over sampling in case you are wondering later on. That being said, let's now go back to our peak level here and let's play the snare again. And I'll solo it for the sake of this example. And we can now see from zero, how much headroom do we have? It should be minus one, but let's see. And you see that it's actually bringing down the peak, obviously, of the snare by about 1 dB. This is set to a 3 dB scale. So we're seeing it come down by 1 dB. And now if I were to bypass and put it in, you're going to hear that even though we are now technically 1 dB lower, that the difference between the before and after is not as present. We still are achieving the same level of perceived loudness, but by ultimately increasing that headroom and no longer hitting zero. Let's check that out. <laughs> So once again, even though the peak level has decreased, the overall perception of the loudness is similar. We're also getting a little bit of a benefit of the saturation that happens during the clipping process. And this of course is a pretty simple example, but it can be replicated across any other sounds you have that are loud and either overloading the channel or getting close. In fact, you don't even need a sound to be overloading a channel in order to use this. You could even have a sound peaking say at minus six dB, and you could therefore bring the clipping down to minus seven dB and give it an extra dB of headroom as a result of doing this. Of course, none of this should substitute for proper gain staging, but I find that with myself, especially after doing a bunch of different processes on a channel such as EQ and compression and even some saturation, tracks can suddenly become very hot and potentially clip. By closing out the chain with a clipper like this, I can maintain the same level of perceived loudness and avoid clipping when the situation presents itself. The next way we can use a soft clipper is an interesting one, and that would be using it to reduce dynamic range. Many of us rely on compression and limiting for this job, but a soft clipper could actually do this as well. The key difference, however, is that a compressor will offer more tone shaping control, stuff like the attack, the release, the knee, whereas a clipper is pretty much just fixed in the way that it approaches. It's pretty aggressive. It's going to handle things quickly and diligently, and therefore it'll produce a slightly different sound from a compressor, as you can imagine. Despite that, let's explore what it would look like by applying a soft clipper to the drum master group that I have here. So this is where all my drums go. And before I enable my standard clip, let's see how much peak level we have on this track. <laughs> So you can see on the loudest moments, I have about minus 4.2 dB of headroom on the drum group when I play it before applying any clipping. So now we can enable our clipper and set it up in a way that's similar to a compressor, but of course a little bit different. Now our goal here is gonna be to clip the loudest moments of our track, which are typically dominated by the kick and snare in this example. Afterwards, we can add some gain to our signal, which will primarily benefit the quieter moments. And that'll be stuff like the hi-hats, for example, in this case. So first let's set our clip level, which is almost like a threshold, right? Anything that passes this level will get clipped. And I'm actually going to bring it down well below 4.2. 4.2 is where we're currently peaking at. But let's say I want to create at least two more dB of headroom. I'm actually going to bring it all the way down to 6.2. Let's check that out. So even there, without adding any volume or doing anything else, just by simply clipping the track here, you could hear a difference in the character and the presence of the drums as a whole. They're a bit punchier, but still present despite the track now being 2 dB quieter. But keep in mind that that reduction is not happening consistently. It's only happening during those really loud moments, like we said. So knowing that we've created an additional 2 dB of headroom, logically, I should be able to add about 2 dB to the gain or the output stage here to therefore make up for that. And of course, what's going to happen is we're definitely going to hear an increase in the presence of those quieter elements once again. Let's actually play this now and take a listen. <music> Thank you. 
So a pretty interesting and significant difference. Again, we're still peaking here at minus 4.2. So we're peaking at the same level as we were initially when I don't have the clipper in. However, adding the clipper, it's now allowing us to manage those dynamics a bit more effectively, very similar to a compressor, add some volume back to benefit those quieter parts while taming those loud peaks like we discussed. You may not want to use this or swap a compressor for a clipper if you're making a more dynamic type of genre, maybe rock or jazz or something like that. It wouldn't necessarily make sense. However, if you're making a more electronic focus genre, stuff like house or hip hop trap, especially a clipper is probably going to be the way to go if you want that increase in presence and aggression. Now, speaking of aggression and loudness, let's talk about the third technique I want to show you, which is using a soft clipper to push the level of a sound closer to the maximum, but without creating a harsh distortion. Let's exemplify this with the kick I have on this track. Let's play this and see what peak level we have so far. <laughs> So without any processing, the kick is hitting minus 2.6 on the peak level here. Now it's obviously present at this level, but let's say that we really wanted to push it and drive the volume, get a little bit more out of it. Now, if I were to use a gain plugin to push the volume on this, the furthest I can go is about 2.6 dB. At 2.6 dB, I'm gonna now be hitting digital zero and anything beyond this, obviously we're gonna start to peak or overload the channel and potentially create some of that harsh, nasty distortion that we don't want. However, if I got rid of this and instead rely on something like a clipper, I can use the clip function to guarantee that I have a certain amount of headroom, let's say minus 0.2, and then I could use the input gain on this plugin to actually drive the level up. If you don't have it like this, you can actually even still keep your EQ7 or whatever gain plugin you're using and simply use the clip setting to therefore guarantee that you have headroom. But let's actually do all of this with the plugin. So I'm actually going to play this and using my input gain here, I'm going to drive the level up until I feel like I'm getting the right amount of presence while also being mindful of how much much clipping is taking place. And then after we can evaluate some additional steps, let's do that starting from zero on the input gain. So as you can see, as a result of the clipper, we're able to preserve that 0.2 dB of headroom with the clip setting, but then I'm able to drive that level and basically increase the level of the kick by 3 dB. And even though I am upping it by 3 dB, you can see that we're really only losing about minus 1 dB or so when we're clipping the signal, right? So we're actually not clipping it too aggressively and we're able to just benefit from all of that volume while again, guaranteeing that we're not going to clip as a result of using the clipper. Now this next technique is definitely gonna be different from the others. And that's gonna be to use a clipper to add character to a sound. We've definitely been adding character to each sound throughout this process and through each of the techniques I've shown you so far, but a lot of that has been a lot more subtle. But now we're talking about purposely using a clipper and pushing it over the edge to ultimately achieve a more aggressive or different sound, something that's clearly affected on purpose. If I'm being honest, this is definitely more of a sound design thing than mixing, but I do find that every now and then when I am mixing a song, I am required to step up and almost put on my producer hat and alter sounds in a very unique and specific way, or maybe even do stuff like this in parallel to add a little bit more grit or edge to a sound. So to do that, we're actually going to focus on the bass on this song. And let's actually just play this and see where we're currently peaking at on this channel. <laughs> So right now we're obviously peaking somewhere around minus 7.1, but let's say we wanted to make this bass dirtier or grittier. I'm going to solo this first and foremost. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the clip level down and we're not actually going to set this like I've set the others. In the past, I've obviously been focused on what is the level and then bringing this down to roughly that level or slightly below it, creating a little bit more headroom. In this case, I'm actually going to just use my ears. I'm going to dispose of my logic and I'm just going to essentially do this, bring it down to a place and listen and see where do I actually like it? Where am I getting that grittiness, that edge, that distortion sound that I want for this bass. Let's try that right now. So 
So right here, actually at about minus 15, seems to be pretty good. Notice how we're getting a very buzzy kind of sound. It actually almost sounds like something you would hear on My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by Kanye or maybe even Yeezus, to be honest. But you can just hear how it has a very distinctive, edgy type of sound. And again, this might not work in every situation. It may not actually work on this track in context, but you can see how obviously we're able to pull this down and start to create something. Now, we're not done yet, so definitely pay attention to this next step here. But as a result of my clipping, I'm sure I'm actually going to now be peaking at a much lower level. Let's pay attention to that. So no surprise, obviously we're peaking at about minus 15, the same as our clip level. Now remember, initially we were peaking at about 7.1 dB. So with that logic in mind, what we could do is add the difference between minus 15 and minus 7.1 as output gain to our clipper. That means I'm gonna add about 7.9 dB back, or maybe 8 dB in this case, because for whatever reason, standard clip works in increments of 0.2. So I'm gonna go to 8.0. So I'm actually gonna make this just slightly louder than we initially were, but pretty close in the same ballpark and let's now hear that difference Now, even though I added 7.9 dB of gain, the reality is this is a much more creative type of process and less of a technical one. I'm sure it does overlap a little bit, but really whatever sounds good to you is the ticket. Overall, I'd say we should be less concerned with the technicalities of things when we're doing this part of the process and more just focused on how does it sound? Does it sound good? Does it sound pleasing? Do we like it? Maybe it actually makes sense to not add 7.9 dB of gain and just leave it at zero and rebalance our volume faders simply because you can hear the difference in the frequency presence. There's a lot more higher end harmonics, which is just just a product of the distortion process, the saturation process that happens with clipping. And this is a great example of that. And this is actually why a lot of people like to use clipping on 808s, for example, especially in a parallel situation, you could preserve the low end of your track by just having it be naked, bare, not much on it, very low end focus, but then stacking a parallel channel with a clipper, for example, driving things up like this and getting some of those higher end harmonics. There's a few different ways you could obviously do this. And hopefully this just inspires you while I am showing it to you with a bass, you could definitely apply this to other sounds, whether it's an 808 or even some other sound, maybe a lead sound, an instrument, a guitar, something like that. A lot of different ways you can apply this to ultimately enhance the texture of what's already there. So now let's talk about the final soft clipping technique that I'm going to share with you today, which is focused on mastering. Something I like doing on my masters is serial limiting. This is when instead of using one limiter to drive the level all the way up, you split the work up between two or more limiters to achieve a much more subtle and transparent result. I'd say this is a good thing because limiters, depending on how they're set up, can pump and lead to some undesirable effects. However, they are also a necessary evil in order to achieve optimal loudness. With serial limiting, the first limiter is there to essentially catch the loudest peaks. The second limiter, however, is there to then drive up the level and achieve optimal loudness. With this technique I'm about to show you, we're gonna use the same approach, but instead of using two limiters in series, we're gonna use a clipper that then goes into a limiter. Now, the way I do this is I use the clipper like I did in the first technique I showed you, which is to create a bit more headroom than I already have, and then use the limiter to drive that level to a louder mastered level. Because clippers lack shaping controls like attack and release, they don't really pump, which makes them ideal for treating the peaks before raising the level in a more transparent way via the limiter. So before we apply our clipper to our master, let's actually see what is this channel peaking at currently. So you can see here that we're peaking at about minus 2 dB. What we can now do is put our standard clip in or whatever clipper you're using and use this to create some more headroom. Now, even though we have 2 dB of headroom, I'm actually gonna bring this down to minus four. So what this is now gonna do is give us two additional dB of headroom and therefore this track should now be peaking at minus four dB.
as you can tell. Now, because I want to use a final limiter to drive up the level, I'm actually not going to be using any of the gain features that come with the clipper, at least this clipper. Maybe yours doesn't have it, but even though standard clip does give me the option to add some gain to the output or the input, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to use the limiter as my final level control and that final thing that pushes the level to the maximum. For that, I'm going to be relying on Isotope Ozone 11's maximizer. Let me just get a couple of starter settings going. First thing I'm going to do is just use the IRC4 transient option. I find this just preserves the transients more. It's a very transient dense song. So obviously I want to make sure that I'm catering to that. Next, I'm going to use my output level. I'm going to set this to about minus one, which is going to be optimized for streaming services. And just because I do worry about how things translate into the real world, into analog environments in particular, I am going to use true peak metering. Now in terms of character, which really controls the attack and release, I'm actually going to set this to a four, which will be a smoother sound. I could definitely leave it on the fast, but I do find that the clipper is already going to be tackling the peaks and other things very fast here. So therefore I'm going to use a smoother setting. Now, some of these settings are obviously unique to Ozone 11. So if you aren't using a maximizer or a limiter like this, all you really need to worry about is making sure you have at least minus one dB of headroom. So setting your output ceiling to minus one. And then if you have access to an attack and release, setting them so that they're not so fast or aggressive, more on the medium side of things. Now, from here, I know that we have about four dB of headroom as we've established. So I can obviously drive this up at least four dB. However, that's not going to be enough. We're basically going to achieve no peak reduction. It's just going to preserve things as is, but add four dB of level in the process. So what I'm going to do is drive the gain here at least four dB, but likely more than that. In fact, as I bring this up, I'm going to watch my LUFS readings here, my LUFS readings, and try to get us in the ballpark of minus nine, minus 10 LUFS to start. So let's do that. So we're definitely in that ballpark, right? We're floating between minus nine, minus 10. Obviously it's not perfect all the time, but it's somewhere in that window, which is a good thing. Everything sounds louder and cleaner. And keep in mind that I haven't really applied any other mastering to the mastering chain at this point, other than the clipper and the limiter. You could absolutely apply EQ, compression, and other processes before we get to this step, but I'm purposely keeping this simpler. However, when you do this on your own, absolutely feel free to do that. That being said, let's pay attention to the gain reduction taking place in the maximizer. What I'm gonna do is actually play this and bypass the clipper that goes beforehand. And let's just see how much gain reduction are we achieving with and without the clipper into the maximizer. Here we go. So if you noticed, when I don't have the clipper in, the maximizer is applying more gain reduction to the signal. In this case, upwards of 4.8 dB. Whereas when I put the clipper in beforehand, the most gain reduction applied is actually 3.7 dB. So what I'm getting at here is the clipper pre-treats the peaks in a way and therefore allows the limiter to not have to work as hard. The combination of these two processes allows us to achieve a louder level and a warmer sound as a byproduct of the saturation naturally imparted by the soft clipper. And just for good measure, let's bypass both of these and hear the before and after.
obviously a massive level difference, which is just a product of the mastering process. But you can hear how we were able to achieve a much louder, cleaner, fuller mix with the combination of these two processes. Now, something you might be wondering about is what exactly is the difference between a clipper and a limiter? Don't you worry, I got the answer for you in this video right here. Definitely watch that next. If you got value out of this video, if you learned something, please smash that like button blue. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and want to learn more about mixing, mastering, and other audio related advice. I appreciate y'all for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. Five.